just as it is in our nature to move, just as it's in our nature to connect with others, I believe that it is in our nature as humans to look for purpose and meaning in life. There are many pills that you may take, your doctor may prescribe them to you, whether it's vitamins, drugs for cholesterol, blood sugar, blood pressure, etc. But this is one pill, purpose in life, that I really, really recommend that you take. What's interesting is there is good scientific evidence to back this up. People who rate themselves as having significant purpose in life have been shown to uh, reduce the risk of suffering a heart attack if they have a history of heart disease. Uh, in older adults, it's been shown to reduce the risk of stroke and it may well protect against declining brain function as well. You might be familiar, familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is essentially a, a, a diagram, a triangle, which describes what we need in life to feel well, happy and fulfilled. And it starts at the base of the, the triangle or pyramid with simple things like food and shelter and warmth. But right at the top of the pyramid, at the tip, you've got um, self-actualization, which is being all that you can be and fulfilling your potential. And transcendence, which put simply is helping other people. Without thinking about those higher bits of life, you can never fully realise all that you could be. And the reality is that we all have value systems, whether we consider ourselves religious or not religious, uh, we all have a way of doing life, whether we realise it or not. And that's the key in that some people haven't given any conscious thought to it, whereas others have. And belief systems themselves, to be more specific, are quite interesting because uh, it has been shown that having a strong belief system may well reduce the risk of death from diseases like heart disease and cancer and improve the ability to cope with long-term conditions as well. A quite popular concept at the moment when it comes to thinking about purpose and meaning is the word ikigai, which is a Japanese word and, and translates roughly as uh, reason for being. And uh, it's been slightly hijacked by uh, sort of health coaches and business types uh, in terms of a career-based model, but very crudely speaking, uh, you people often hear it described as thinking about four key areas. So there's what you love, what the world needs, what you can be paid for, and what you're good at. And I suppose the idea there is that if you manage to do something which ticks all four of those boxes, then you're in that, that sweet spot. The reality is that for most of us, that won't happen every day, but you may well find that in your life, there are things that you are passionate about and good at, and there are things that you get paid for and that the world needs, and that all in all, you can find things in your life, personally and professionally, that, that overall give you purpose and meaning. In fact, as I said, that concept has been slightly hijacked. A more traditional approach, according to Japanese culture, would be to think, instead of those more work-focused areas, perhaps think about words like values, your roles and relationships, your hobbies and interests, and being present in the moment to, uh, as well, and how those can combine into meaningful daily living. So here are my top tips for living life on purpose. Uh, number one, I would say, you really need to give yourself time to think. It's a real blessing to be able to do that. And day to day, it can be very easy to just get sucked into the, the treadmill of life with your nose to the grindstone. But the reality is that unless you lift your eyes up and set aside some time, you're never going to have that chance for reflection. And that is more likely to occur if you plan it. So again, putting it in your diary, whether it's half an hour with yourself once a week and an hour or two once a month uh, for some people you might do better to actually have a real retreat and uh, now this might be uh, spending a week on top of a mountain in robes uh, in prayer and contemplation or getting pampered at a luxury spa of your choice but actually it could even just be a day you set aside or half a day at home or somewhere else where you set up the physical environment so that you're less likely to be distracted and it's something that you've cleared with your friends, your family, your colleagues, so that it can be a really fruitful time for you. Another thing to consider also is when thinking about your purpose and meaning in life, inextricably linked with that is, is your sense of happiness and well-being. And there is a commonly cited equation, which is happiness equals reality minus expectations. And you may feel that you've got balance of life absolutely right. But if you do want to be things to be different, if you want to feel happier, for example, then you've got two options, really. You can either change your reality, for example, through education, through career success, through changes to your physical or mental health, or your relationships, or you need to look at your expectations. And many people struggle because 
they have unwittingly accepted certain expectations of life that they're not living up to and in changing those they will that will enable them to be more happy and satisfied in life and on a related note when it comes to thinking about life people often use the phrase work life balance and there's this implication that you know you can't you have to have sort of one or the other or that it has to be just balanced in the right way but the difficulty there is just in those very words um if if work is what you do at a desk you don't necessarily enjoy all that much and life is living for the weekend seeing your friends and your family well actually i would argue in many ways that's that's quite a sad reality to live because then the majority of your life of your working day will be spent doing something that you don't get as much satisfaction from and i appreciate life is complicated and it isn't as easy just to you know just like that to change jobs but you know there is another commonly quoted phrase which is that the person who does what they love for a living never works a day in their life and it is worth thinking about that and i would certainly say that I see many people in my surgery who come to talk to me about physical and mental health problems, the underlying cause of which is their dissatisfaction with their life and particularly their dislike of their job. And ultimately all the pills in the world and referrals to counsellors and psychologists are not going to address that, but changing those underlying issues will. And finally, when you're thinking about these things, talk to others, get support from your family, from your friends, from your colleagues, run ideas past them. They may well be able to support you or even give you better ideas. 